Hello, Business 330 students. This is Professor Hassey. It's our week two lecture video, and welcome back. This week two, we're concentrating on financial statements. A key link to finance is understanding what happened. Where are we with our company? Have we made money, lost money? Do we owe money? What's our equity position? And how do we an, an, do an analysis of our financial statements compared to our past performances and to the industry or our competitors? That's the topic for tonight. We're gonna first of all look at over our portfolio review from the uh, last week, where you all are having student professor interviews this week uh, via Zoom. If you have yet to sign up for a professor interview, Please do so this week. Remember, this is a graded assess assignment to get together with me and just make sure we are uh, get to know each other and, we're, and any answer any questions or concerns you may have. Then we're studying chapters three and four. We have a, a financial statement uh, review of that. You have an assignment number one this week due on Sunday the 3rd, sorry, Labor Day weekend, uh, on chapters one through four. And then next week, we tackle chapter five, which is the time value of money. And you have assignment number two next week, due September 10th. And it's also on the time value of money. And also, you'll be updating your portfolio in that assignment. So a lot to do. And uh, let's begin. First of all, remember you did your portfolio uh, last week along with your bio, and some of you need to resubmit that portfolio. And please go to the discussion forum in Blackboard in, for week one. If you do not see a grade in your grade center for that week one work, it's because you still have to resubmit your portfolio. And common areas of resubmission are, I do not see your calculation formula in the shares column. Remember our portfolio is to determine the investment in dollars, divide the price on October 25th into that investment in this cell here, the formula to come up with the shares purchased. And that number should be rounded to the nearest whole dumb number. Remember the price is in dollars, the shares are, are numbers, and the investments are in dollars. And I want to, would like to see a formula in those cells. Another common area of resubmission is you did not find the index values of the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. Remember to do that as well as of Friday, August 25th. Some of us forgot to do that. Again, that's for trapping, tracking purposes to see how your portfolio does to the overall market. And remember in weeks one, two, and three in the file folders for Blackboard, there's an explanation of what those three index represent and what they mean. So please, if you've not seen your grade yet for week one, it means you have to submit or resubmit your spreadsheet portfolio. Remember it's in a spreadsheet format. So please look at that this week. Also, we have an assignment posted this week. The assignment is on the first four chapters of our text. It's a combination of short answer, multiple choice, calculation, <clears throat> add some internet research. So those combination of those things are what you're going to be doing in assignment number one. And it's due on Sunday, September 3rd. Remember, if you need extra time, I know it's the Labor Day weekend and I apologize for that, but is the, if you need extra time, just let me know with an email and you, we can extend your work past Sunday, September 3rd. You have a new folder in Blackboard this week. It's the Assignments and Examination File folder. If you click on that assignments and examination file folder, you will see assignment number one for you to download. Now I give you two formats. I give you a PDF file and I give you a Word doc file, both the same assignment. So you right click that, save it to your dash, your, uh, your um, computer, either on your flash drive or on your desktop, 
and then you do your work. Now you can do your work on the on the assignment, right on the document, or you can just do a separate file and file that. Now how to file it, all you need to do is click on the file folder here. Up will come an upload page and you just go to upload files and take your file and either drag it or search for it on your computer, select it, hit open, and that'll load it up into your files. And then you must hit submit. Once you hit submit, then I have the file ready to review on my own. What I'll do is I'll review the file, grade it, and then post it back to your grade center so you can see my comments and the grade for that particular assignment. Remember, uh, the Blackboard does not give you a okay that the file had been submitted correctly. So make so if I do not receive the file, I will let you know and you can resubmit it. All assignment work should be uploaded through Blackboard. No email postings, please. I'd appreciate that. I have a lot of students this uh, fall session and to have emails of postings, it's gonna be very confusing and I'll probably lose some of them. It's a little bit easier to keep track of if you just post your work through Blackboard. And again, if you have any questions or concerns about that, just please let me know. So once you submit it, it's ready to go and then I receive it ready to grade, okay? This assignment is 10% of your course grade. And as I said, due on September 3rd. So right click the file, save it to your computer, do the work, and we're off and running for this first assignment of the year. So at the end of this second week, 25% of your course grade will be determined. 10% for the bio and the portfolio work of week one, 5% for the student professor Zoom meeting of this week, and 10% for this assignment number one due on Sunday. So that's 25%. One quarter of your grade will be determined through week two of this course. Next week, you'll have another assignment. I will post that on Sunday, September 3rd, assignment two on chapter five, which is due September 10th. And you can see that on Sunday. So as we begin our work in week two, a couple of things to note. As always, just like in week one, you'll see uh, a learning assignments uh, tab on your Blackboard, which gives you all the things we're gonna be doing this week. Uh, lecture video, I'm a little late with the posting, sorry. Uh, we're reading it and looking at chapters three and four, which is financial statement and measuring financial statements or financial statement analysis. We'll look at a review problem tonight in our lecture. You have two grades this week, assignment one and the student professor meeting. Don't forget to sign up for that. And then next Monday is Labor Day. There'll be, there'll be only an online lecture, which is natural. We don't have any other classes or anything like that. So we will have a online lecture next Monday on Labor Day. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that because all our lectures are online. All right, so let's take a look at the file folder for week two. There's our agenda that we just looked at at the start of this video, but two two main files you need to concentrate on in my lecture notes. Financial statement analysis and a, a week two in-class review. This is the two highlights of this week two work. And that's what you need to download and take a look at. And also those bits of information will help you with assignment one. There's an explanation of our week two. There's a finance fact. Last week, it was the S&P 500. This week, it's the Dow Jones Industrial. What makes up these indexes? And then our lecture notes of chapters two, excuse me, three and four. Okay, so let's take a look at a video that begins this review of financial statements. We are going to discuss three common financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. Are you familiar with these documents and why they matter to you? 
If you own your own business or even run a division of a business, it is imperative that you understand these statements because they tell you about the general financial health of the company. Also, if you have ever invested or considered investing in a company, whether through the purchase of stock or through a loan, you'll want to understand the company's financial health. In this program, we will explain each of these three statements and what their purpose is, how to read them, and how they can be applied in a real-world setting. So why is it important to understand all three financial statements? Basically, each one tells only part of the story. They are somewhat like pieces of a puzzle, and you need all three pieces to see the big picture. Let's begin by reviewing the general purpose of each financial statement and what distinguishes one statement from another. Simply put, the income statement tells you whether or not the company is profitable during a given period, usually monthly, quarterly, or annually. It may be helpful to think of an income statement in terms of a video camera. At the start of a period being measured, you hit the record button and the camera starts recording everything that takes place until you press stop. Similarly, an income statement indicates how a company is performing over an extended period of time. Knowing whether your company was profitable over a period of time does not necessarily tell you how much money the company has right now. That's what the balance sheet is for. In contrast to the income statement that records transactions in time like a video camera, the balance sheet is like a still camera, showing the company's financial state at a given moment. It provides a snapshot in time that can be used to determine how much the company currently has, how much it owes, and what is left for the owners. The cash flow statement is based on numbers from your income statement and balance sheet, and is like looking at your own checking account. It shows you what the company did to generate cash and how it used cash during a given period of time, often monthly, quarterly, or annually, like the income statement. Thus it answers two questions. Where is my cash coming from? And where is my cash going? Remember, while each statement has a different purpose, all three are necessary in helping us understand a company's complete financial story. For example, if you want to know whether or not a company is profitable, the income statement is what you need. Even though you know the company is profitable, if you want to know how much money the company has available right now that you can spend, you want to look at the balance sheet. And regardless of profitability and current available cash, if you want to know where cash came from and where it went, you look at the cash flow statement. Each document fills in a piece of the puzzle to complete your understanding. In our week two Blackboard in class review uh, file folder, uh, there is this spreadsheet. It's for the Reggie Dunlop Incorporated. It's a, it's a spreadsheet file of their financial statements for the years ending December 31st, 2020 and 21. And this highlights all the information of chapter three and chapter four. You might wanna study this. I'm gonna go over it in a little bit more detail in my Friday update video, but you can get a head start on it. Is remember, the financials in finance provide a historical review of the company. Are they maximizing value? Are they making money? Do they have much debt? Do they, are they, how's their cash flow? Also, it provides data for future planning and financial management. What do we, we take this information of what happened and apply it into the future. And there's three financial statements. The balance sheet, which is a statement of assets, what we own, and how did we fund them? Debt, liabilities, and equity. Equity being made up of the value of common stock that has been booked and issued by the company to their investors and retained earnings. Retained earnings is the accumulative profits less the dividends paid out to shareholders over the life of the company. That's equity. The income statement, which is for a period of time, in this case, one year, sales, expenses, Earnings before interest and taxes. Less the interest rate on debt. Earnings before taxes. The tax rate. Taxes you pay. Less the net income of the company. As you can see, this company, Reggie Dunlop Incorporated, lost $95,000 in 2020. Then they made $253,584 in 2021. I bet they're happy about that. Also given is the amount of shares of common stock outstanding of this company. 
In 2020, they had 100,000 shares of stock outstanding, in other words, owned by the public. And as you can see at the end of 2021, they've issued now 250,000 shares of stock. So it looks like in 2021, this company got some capital by issuing 150,000 more shares of stock. And you can see that in the common stock line of the balance sheet. It went from $460,000 to 1,680. That's a delta, a change of 1,220,000. So they increased their equity position in 2021 by issuing to the market 150,000 shares of stock and got cash 1,220,000. We'll see that in the cash flow statement. I just realized that I had the wrong year file up uh, for Mr. Reggie Dunlop Incorporated. Now I just posted that up. It's not 2020-21, it's 2021-22. So I just corrected that here. It's the same numbers. I just had the wrong uh, uh, file up for that uh, financial statement. But continuing, as you can see, this is the balance sheet and the income statement for uh, this company. It's a statement of what we own assets, what we owe liabilities, and the equity or the ownership stake in the assets of the company. The revenue or net income statement or P&L statement, however you like to call it, is a statement of sales and expenses. And then the cash flow statement, which is a statement of where the cash came from in the prior year. For example, Balance sheet, as you can see on cash, cash increased by $6,718. Well, where did that $6,718 come from? That's very important, especially for financial managers. And the cash flow statement shows us that money or where that cash came from, came into the company, went out of the company in operations, financing, and investing. Those are the big three financial statements. And then what, with these financial statements, you do statement financial statement analysis. This is what chapter four is all about. Now, question number seven on your assignment number one has to do with looking at the financial statements and looking at the data given to you in that problem and finding some key things that you can calculate from that information. And it's you can use this template of financials as a way of helping you find that out. Secondly, the questions seven, eight, and nine are referring to chapter four, how these ratios and, and information can tell you how the company did in regards to the past and in regards to their industry or competitors. And there's four, six key areas, liquidity, debt management, profitability, market value. So we'll talk about those in just a minute. But going back to the financial statements, there's a lot going on here. You don't. One of the best things about finance is you don't have to worry about how these numbers were arrived at. That's the accountant's job. Debits and credits, trial balance, um, adjusting entries, closing entries. Oof, remember those days? We don't have to worry about that. All we have to do is being able to look at the numbers and what do they tell us about the company. And a lot of those numbers come from the changes or the deltas from the accounts from one year to the next. That tells us a lot. Remember, the priorities of financial statements in finance are one, it provides a historical review of the company. Are we maximizing shareholder value? Remember the definition of finance is to maximize shareholder value. The financial statements are the first indicators of that. And two, it pro provides data for future planning and financial management. How are we doing now and where do we see ourselves or our business going in the future? This will help us in making those strategic decisions. So the key points of financial statements is it to explain and something. And you as a financial manager have to interpret it. The balance sheet short-term or current assets, assets that you own that have a lifespan of less than one year, long-term assets or fixed assets, that's property, plant, equipment, computers, land, buildings, depreciable assets that can be depreciated over time, 
The combination of short-term and long-term is the total assets of the business. And those assets were, requ uh, were acquired by short-term debt, current liabilities, long-term debt, in this case it's bonds, but for some companies it can be mortgages or bank loans, and then the equity position of the company. Remember, as we said earlier, the company had 100,000 shares of stock in 2021. Now they have 250,000 shares at the end of 2022. That means they increased their equity position by 1,220,000. The second part of equity is retained earnings. The earnings that we retained, profits that we keep by the business, by the ownership, less the dividends of the year. For example, this company in 2022 made $253,584 in profit. The company declared a 22 cents a share dividend <laughs> to be distributed to the shareholders. 22 cents times 250,000 shares of stock is $55,000. So of the 253 584, they distributed 55,000 to the shareholders. That means that leaves 198 584. And when the accountants of this company close their books, that 198 584 goes into retained earnings. And that's how the retained earnings changed from 2021 to 2022. Remember, retained earnings is an accumulation of all your profits that you keep from day one of the corporation. It's the ownership share of the company. Then we get into the income statement. We talked about that a little bit. Operating profit is earnings before interest and taxes just the operations of the company. Then we pay interest on our loans. Then we pay taxes on that earnings before taxes, and we come up with our net income. So all of this tells us something about the business on a given date for a period of time. And then most importantly, the cash flow for a period of time, where the money came from. And there's a couple of key points here. The operations of this business, it's made up of three areas, net income, depreciation, and working capital. Working capital defined as accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable, and accruals. So net income you get from the income statement. That's the amount of profit we made last year. But if remember, if we look at the income statement, you can see that depreciation is in there as an expense. Mr. Hassey, why do you have depreciation as a cash flow increase in operations on the cash flow statement? Well, very simply, because depreciation, if you remember in your accounting days, is a expense of the business without writing a check. You're allowed to depreciate fixed assets over time. The IRS lets you get away with that or do that, not get away with it, do that. It's a non-cash expense. So in terms of the cash flow statement, we add that back in because it was an expense, but it was not cash. So it's basically cash coming in. And that's why it's there. And then we have accounts receivable and an inventory, current assets. Look at the balance sheet. Accounts receivable increased by $245,000. Inventories increased by $429,000. When assets increase from year to year, that increase is called negative cash flow because that's $245,840 of change in accounts receivable that we didn't collect. No cash came in. It's negative cash flow. At the same time, inventory went up $429,000. That's cash that we have not received because we still own the inventory. We haven't sold it yet. So those are two numbers that kind of stick out like a sore thumb on this cash flow statement. Big numbers of cash going out of the business. And then we look at AP and accruals. Those are current liabilities right here. Notice notes payable, which is considered a current liability because it's probably due that note 300,000 is due in the next year. We do not include it as operations. 
notes payable is a part of financing because it's an interest bearing expense, interest bearing, it's not operations, it's financing. But notice accounts payable increased by 35,800 from year to year and accruals increased $95,040 year to year. Now that's a key point. Remember we just said if assets increase, that's negative cash. If accounts payable in or liabilities increase, that's positive cash because those are expenses that we still owe that we haven't paid yet. So eventually we will pay them, but not in the month of December 2022. So it's considered positive cash flow. See that? Net income, depreciation, working capital. The combination of all those, this company had a negative $170,536 of negative cash going out of the business for operations. Financing is another story. Financing is debt, long-term debt, and equity. So notice our notes payable went down 420,000. So in this case, liabilities go down, that's negative cash flow. Long-term bonds went down, negative cash flow. Why? We've paid off some of that debt. So look at 420 negative, 500, that's cash going out of the business. $920,000, they paid off debt. And as we mentioned earlier, the company issued another 150,000 shares of stock. They got $1.22 million from that sale in cash par value. And that's considered it might cash coming in in the form of issuing common stock. And then finally, dividends. Remember, we paid out dividends. We calculated them here. That's money going out. There it is right there. Yeah. So in conclusion, the net effect of financing, 245936 in cash coming in, positive. And the final part of cash flow statement is investing. The investment in assets like investments or fixed assets. Remember, assets go up. That's negative cash flow. Short-term investments went up. Fixed assets went up. The net effect of that is negative cash flow, 68,682. So notice every account in this balance sheet and income statement is accounted for as a delta in this cash flow statement. The net effect of all this, hold your breath, negative 175.36 from operations, positive 245.936 from financing, negative cash 68.682 from investing. The net of all that is $6,718, which just so happens to be the delta in cash on the balance sheet for the year. So we're telling the investors and the users and the review third the external users of our financial statements where our cash came from. Now there's some problems here. The company granted and nice rightly so paid off some debt. But how did they pay off the debt? They issued the most expensive form of investment, common stock. Usually companies pay off debt with the cash flow generated from operations. But this company had no cash flow from operations because of those high receivable and inventory balances. So they had to issue common stock to pay back their debt. Ugly. That's the most expensive form of financing. With borrowing money or debt, you have an interest cost. But with common stock, you have two types of costs. And we'll talk more about this when we get to weighted average cost of capital. You have two types of cost. You have, excuse me, you have dividends, the dividends you pay out to investors, they expect them. And you have hopefully the company growing and increasing the stock price uh, and the value of the stock in the market. That's a cost. Investor required return, expected return. So those that's the most expensive form of ca capital, and you're using it to pay off old debt. 
Usually, companies issue common stock to invest in new assets, growth, new developments of, of buildings, equipment, product, R&D, new markets. It's going to expand the company and create more cash flow and profits. Here, you're using capital to pay off existing debt. Not a good sign. I like to call the cash flow statement as looking under the hood of a company looking under the hood. In other words, you see the, the company uh, on the outside, the income statement of balance sheet all looks fairly well, nice and clean. The car looks nice. But then how you really find out about a car is you open up the hood, look at the engine, turn on the car. How does it sound? Is it running well? Is the engine nice and clean and operating efficiently? That's what the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement tells us as managers how the company is operating. Are they efficient? Are they maximizing value by having positive cash flows, investing in new assets, paying off debt? This company is doing some of that, but not all of it. And this will be some problems for this organization. Now, once we have that completed, then we can go into chapter four and call it's called financial review. This is that financial analysis file I gave you in a week two lecture notes. Uh, this is taken from your textbook, and this is a perfect example and a good template of all the different types of ratios and analysis that you can do of, of a company's financial statements. The profitability area, the asset management area, the liquidity area, and the debt management area, and the appropriate analysis, and formulas of all those. In your assignments, you're looking at some of these as well. So we're going to concentrate on six key ones. But this is the reference in your textbook, and I have provided this reference in your Blackboard. So here are the six. The current ratio, which is a statement of liquidity of the company. It's a definition of current assets divided by current liability. So in 2022, if I take the balance sheet, the current assets, 2,000,000, and divide it by the current liabilities, 1,000,039, I get a ratio of 2.58. The industry average, or my competitors, is 1.25. In most companies, matter of fact, all companies, you want the the current ratio to be anywhere from one to two. Anything higher than two is ugly. That tells you you have too many receivables or too much inventory and too much cash in your accounts that you're not investing. That's not good. So current ratio is the liquidity of the company, but sometimes the companies can be have a liquidity problem because they have too much receivables and inventory. That's a big issue. The second one is called debt ratio. It's a relationship of total debt to assets. Back to the balance sheet. The company's total debt, 1,539,000. What percent is that to assets? 3,516,000. It's roughly about 43.78%, which is pretty good. Look at December, look at 2021. It was almost 81%. But remember, on the cash flow statement, remember we paid off $920,000 of debt with the issuance of that common stock? So that dramatically lessened the debt position of the company. The, the industry or the comparable to this is the company's competition. Their average is about 60%. So the company's doing a good job, but at a steep price, they use the wrong capital to pay off that debt but they still have a better debt position. Another, another word for this is it, it's the, what's the leverage of the company. Remember, the more debt, the higher debt, the higher the interest, which is additional money going out of the business. Then another key indicator, which some of you probably know from other areas, is the profit margin on sales. That's called the profitability relationship. It's net income divided by sales. What percent is that? Well, Net income, income statement. Net income divided by the net sales of the company, that's roughly about 3.6%. Not bad. 
but their competitors a little higher, five and a quarter percent. That's the relationship of profit margin. Most businesses like profit margins of anywhere from five to 25%, but it depends on the industry. It depends on the type of products you sell of what your margins can be. And we'll talk more about that uh, later. Your return on total assets, the relationship of that net income to the assets of the company. So the net income is 253,584. The assets are 3.5 million. What percentage of that? What does that mean? It means every dollar invested in assets is returning a profit of a little bit over seven cents, 7.21%. Tells us the relationship of net income to the assets invested to create that. You want your assets or most of your assets to generate a high return. And that's where we look at that. Not as good as our competitors. And then the next one, we'll skip over PE ratio and look at the earnings per share. The earnings per share is the relationship of net income to the outstanding shares of common stock. So the earnings per share is net income, 253,584, divided by the number of shares of stock outstanding of 250,000. Do the arithmetic, that's about a dollar and one cent. So for every share of stock, we're generating a dollar one in profit. And this is a number that's used by a lot of companies in their financial reporting and their financial statements. It's, it's a nice, tight, little, easy number to look at. Last year, the company lost 95 cents a share. This year, they made a dollar one. And so instead of showing all the fancy numbers, you put it down to those two areas, it's a nice, neat way of looking at the company's profitability. And finally, the last statement is the relationship of the stock price in the market to the earnings per share. And that's called the P-E ratio. A lot of investment firms, a lot of investors, a lot of companies watch the P-E of a company. And that is the stock price in the market divided by the earnings per share. So for this company, at the end of the year, the stock price was $12.17. We divide that by the earnings per share that we calculated, $1.01, and we get the price in the market is roughly a little bit over 12 times greater than the stock profit per share. Market is about 10. This is a key indicator for investors. Typically speaking, the lower the PE relationship, the less the undervalued the stock is and it has room to grow in the market. Many investors buy company stock when the PE is under 15 or 20. They consider the stock cheap, it has room to grow, the stock price. Any PE ratio getting above 30, 40, 50, 60, that means the stock in the market is way overvalued of what type of income and profit that stock is generating. We'll talk more about that when we get to stocks uh, next week. But that's a, in, in two weeks. So PE ratio is a big and is a large, a very popular investor tool in the market. Liquidity, debt management or leverage profitability, market value. Six key indicators that you need to be familiar with to look at the financials and tell you certain things about the trends in the company over prior periods and its relationship to its competitors in the industry and the marketplace. Chapter three, chapter four. And those are the key points of these chapters for this week number two. Because what we're gonna be doing is as we go forward in our class, you're gonna be looking at certain things of stocks in your portfolio. You'll be looking at making strategic decisions of, geez, our profits are down. We gotta start investing in some new assets to generate some new revenue and cash flow. How do we do that? How do we finance that? Where do we get the capital? These indicators of the st status of a company tell us what might be our next step? And we'll talk more about that in future weeks. So as we head into week two of our Business 330 class, you have the 
professor interview this week and discussion. You have assignment three due on Sunday. And that part of that assignment three looks at questions that we discussed tonight in regards to financial statement and financial analysis. And all that information is located in these lecture notes for our chapter for our week number two. Again, I will have a follow-up video on Saturday morning at the end of week two to go over some last-minute information. Might help you with some last-minute issues that you have with the assignment three, and we'll take a look at that at the close of our week this week. Again, we have our student hours on Thursday night from six to eight, and I'll look forward. I've already seen many students this week already about the student professor interview. I know it's kind of dopey to see a, an online professor and talk about things for five or 10 minutes, but it's important to me to get to know you, make sure you understand what's going on in this class and have any questions. So we'll see you all this week in those interviews. If not, I'll see you on the weekend with my next lecture video. Have a great week, everybody. Stay healthy and stay cool this week. Adios.